So hello, everyone. This is Mark Einstein, Research Director at CounterPoint Research, talking to you live from beautiful Maui at Snapdragon 2025. And I am delighted to have with me Mr. Amadeep Dawiwal from Product Management at Qualcomm. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. And today we are going to discuss gaming, which is always a big topic here. Uh, and I think something that you have a lot to say about. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess I'll start off with uh, what, what's new at, at Snapdragon 2025 in, in the gaming space? Yeah, so first of all, you know, good to have you here. Uh, Maui, amazing place. This is where we kick off our summit. And so far, we have made some announcements, and there are other announcements which will be coming shortly. But uh, as you know, uh, end user experience, specifically gaming, mm. is a very key focus area for us. And GPU in addition to the overall system, plays a key role there. So one of the few things we have done for gaming this year is we have the, uh, the Qualcomm uh, high-performance memory, Arduino high-performance memory. What that does is it's uh, sitting inside the GPU. It's like a cache, and it's very, very fast, only accessible within the GPU, uh, which means that we can keep surfaces inside the cache, mm -hmm. inside that memory, and not have to go to the DDR or the system level cache. So what that has eventually uh, helped us deliver is a reduction in the bandwidth, about 40%, 30 to 40%, which literally sort of translates into 10 to 15% of power saving at the battery life. Mm. So that's very significant, right, across the gaming uh, ecosystem. In addition to that, we also make generation over generation improvements in terms of performance. As you saw, uh, on an average of workload, we have improved the performance by 23% versus previous generation. We have also improved the power efficiency by 20%. So those uh, savings do translate into a very good gaming experience, right? Um, in addition to that, uh, one thing we are also enabling is, so we have the CPU, the GPU, and the NPU. NPU is our high-performing uh, uh, IP for a lot of the, the AI workloads. So it's very power efficient, very, very high throughput. Um, one thing we are also enabling with this new product is something called graph pipelines. So graph pipelines is basically allowing us to leverage the CPU and the NPU for workloads that are relevant for gaming mm -hmm. as well as non-gaming. So it's you don't have to go through the CPU. It's zero copy, very low latency. So things like, let's say, you know, we have a lot of things coming up from an AI perspective, like non-playable characters, right? Right. So you're in a game, you have a non-playable character, or you are uh, doing voice with your friends and stuff, right? So all that could be offloaded to the NPU, which is good at those kind of tasks, mm -hmm. and we can focus, the GPU can focus on gaming. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the ex examples. In addition to that, I also want to point out that uh, we are bringing out uh, through software a capability called game-ready drivers. It typically happens on the PC space where you see uh, driver updates happen, which means you're able to push through the latest and greatest changes, optimizations for any specific game into the end user, right? So that does improve your gaming experience. So we are bringing the same capability onto the mobile side, Android side, mm. so where we will have these game-ready drivers of course, we have to go work with our partners. But what that allows us to do is deliver the latest creators optimizations for a specific game, give it to our OEMs, and they can uh, push it through the, uh, the Play Store. Right. So I think you said a lot of interesting things there. I think, you know, I, I used to work in the gaming industry in Japan for a little bit. And so I know very well that more battery in a device equals more money at the end of the day. So that's very, very important and I think very, very exciting. Um, I think, you know, something that I'm also seeing, you know, a thing that we've been looking at for, for many years is that kind of the, the PC console experience and the mobile experience, the gap is shortening mm -hmm. because of these hardware innovations. Right. So, um, you know, 
is that something that you're seeing and and you know how how much is that gap narrowing uh, well it is starting to come across quite a bit right so uh as you can see what the phones the compute they had you know 5 years back it's very different now right mm -hmm. so we are literally talking about console like desktop like gaming experiences on a smartphone right mm -hmm. but in a very small form factor but we have to look into things like as you said battery life is very important right so we are not plugged in you are on the go and you are able to play games for multiple hours i mean that is one of the key uh, uh, performance indexes for us right a key kpi right hey how can you deliver the best gaming experience in a small form factor at within a given thermal budget and the battery life right mm -hmm. so a lot of these capabilities are shifting onto the gaming side uh, of the smartphone but in addition to that we also optimize for a better power efficient uh, compute right so one of the things that we are also bringing to the table is mesh shader for example so the mesh shading is is a concept on the on the windows side but we are bringing that in our hardware with this new chipset so we have the mesh shading capabilities ready we are also going to announce or demo a game working with the mesh shading uh, and that is kind of going to show you the leadership capabilities that hey how are games evolving and making use of those kind of capabilities in addition to that ue5 is is the future in my mind right so you will see a lot of the ue5 games ue5 ready games coming into the smartphone side so one of the there are a couple of things we we have done we are we have found pretty solid alliance with epic games so this was announced in august as well we have a very very close working relationship with them they are our close partners so we are going to make sure snapdragon first is what we can deliver from a ue5 perspective on to the android ecosystem uh in addition to that you will also see us bringing ue5 capabilities like nanite like lumen right onto the smartphone side i mean these are features which use compute a lot very intensive on the gpu workloads but the gpus are capable today right so we mm -hmm. bring those into the pc space i mean into the smartphone phase as well interesting so actually this this next question is something i'd i'd love to have your opinion on cuz like i said i i worked in the game industry in Japan a long time ago, and back then it was just all about cloud, mm -hmm. right? And everyone was saying, oh, there's not going to be any more consoles. All you need is a screen with something, and, and that's it. That's actually not what happened. Yeah. Um, what we're actually seeing is, you know, chips like the kind that are produced by Qualcomm are, you know, just getting smaller and enabling more of the console-like experience on the device. Right. So cloud is important, but the other thing that gamers complain about other than battery is latency, yes. right? And so my next question is, you know, how is the whole on-device and AI experience kind of enabling that, you know, which is, you know, a very different future than we had predicted 10 years ago? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good you point out. I myself used to be a gamer a long, long time back, but it was PC gaming. Latency, I mean, people would, you know, literally run you over it, right? I mean your mouse latency everything is is very very critical right right so my my perspective is you know with ai those things are going to get very well improved for mobile mm -hmm. right so like i said we have the cpu which is which has some of the ai capabilities we have the gpu we have the vector alus which are really really good really really efficient so we can use the vector alus today then we have the very efficient npu right so now going back to things like graph pipelines hey how do we how do we leverage the existing assets we have we have you the gpu and the npu to deliver a best gaming experience right and goes back to you know uh, zero copy which translates into power savings goes back to latency improvements because npu can finish a task like very fast right and if the gpu and npu are talking to each other then you can grab that very fast and you can have a very optimized solution so i think ai on the gaming side is evolving there are a lot of things which will come down the pipeline uh super resolution frc ray denoising 
you know, for gaming specifically, having non-playable characters, a lot of things are going to come down the pipeline. So I think for mobile, very exciting times for gaming. I was, you have tons of demos here, and I was playing some of the ones with on, uh, on device AI. And uh, if you can beat the boss, you, you get a prize. Oh, yeah. That's really hard. So I apologize to my son. Uh, I'm not going to be winning. <laughs> but um, one of the interesting things they told me at those booths was that you have 50 partners already um, who are very interested. And, you know, again, as, as someone that, that used to work for a developer, um, you know, what, would you want to tell them? Because I think for game developers, you know, Android isn't nearly as fragmented as it was, but they need to make decisions on resources mm -hmm. for what device optimized in terms of screen and all that. Um, you know, what would you tell the developers um, about what Qualcomm brings to a device through your chips? We work very closely with the developer ecosystem. Uh, they, I think they are equal partners in everything we do, right? So we we work with them from tooling perspective, making sure we give them the latest, greatest tools, which is the Snapdragon profiler. Mm. So with a lot of these capabilities like mesh shading, the high performance memory, right? All that built into the tooling ecosystem. Uh, we, for example, the, the high performance memory. So we have uh, delivered extensions, both Vulkan and GLES, mm. where they can leverage those extensions and use the high performance memory. Mm. So we, as you will see, we have about 15 game companies who have adopted high performance memory and we are expanding that uh, moving forward. Uh, those are the companies who have, those are the gaming uh, studios who have adopted high performance memory and have shown amazing results, right? So just an example. So we, same thing with the other things like mesh shading or anything we do, we always keep the developer ecosystem in mind. I mean, that is the, those are the guys who are doing a lot of real hard work right. in bringing those usages, those experiences, those features to the end users. Right. No, it's, it's interesting because I'm, you know, in Asia, that's very much a mobile first mm -hmm. when it comes yes. to gaming and console sales, even in Japan, very small. Yes. You look at China, yeah. India, compared to even a, a medium-sized European country. So I think that um, this is very exciting. Making every smartphone into a gaming console right. is more money for developers, more money for telcos, more money for the entire ecosystem. Exactly. So very, very exciting. Yes. So, um, you know, those are my questions. I would certainly like to thank you for your time. Uh, we're going to be hearing more, I'm sure, about gaming in Maui. Looking forward to that. And for everyone at home, thanks for watching.